Hello my lovelies, how are you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Point and Click Puzzle Games. Now, if you recall, in our very last episode, we basically had built our first ever Lua Solar 2D app, as it were. And we'd run it, it was our little hello world. If you remember, the biggest task that we had was repositioning the text so that it didn't live behind our little image when we put our image on the app. So that leads me basically to want to go a little bit in depth today about how the Lua or Stroke Solar 2D environment works with regards to coordinates and how things are located both as the display and objects that we put on the display. So without further ado, that's what we're going to cover in today's lesson. Okay, so good stuff, welcome back. So we are basically gonna dive on in, first of all, to do a little recap of what we were doing in the last lesson. So as you can see here, I've already got my Solar 2D simulator up and running, the console's over there telling me what's going on behind the scenes, but we don't really need that today. And as you can see, this was the um, Windows Explorer with all of the content for this particular app living inside that first Hello World. Uh, folder as it were. Now here is our folder and this is our first bit of code, our first bit of text and if you can see quite nicely down the bottom here we've got our world map and we have told it to put it on the display using the display API library and we want to position it content center x. Don't forget if you want to refresh your memory on some of these commands the documentation is available on the Corona Labs website. Okay, so if we was to be really cheeky right now, just to demonstrate how things work, we could play with these coordinates and start giving it numbers. But before we do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive on over to our whiteboard, as it were, and I'm gonna try my best to kind of explain how the Lua coordinate system works. So the first challenge is, is to understand how the coordinates are actually mapped compared to what you were taught at school. Now, if you were taught like myself at school and you was like in maths lesson given treasure hunts and things like that, you would have been told that this is your origin. Okay, so you always sort of start from this location and your X here is your horizontal line. So this is basically controlling how far things to the left goes and this goes to infinity and how far things to the right it goes. And again, it goes on forever and ever and ever. And likewise, um, this is how far north or south, essentially you could go on the vertical axis. And again, our distances go on forever and ever. And so that little sideways eight symbol, if you are quite young and you haven't come across this yet in maths, it is basically your symbol for infinity. Think Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond. So that's what that little symbol means. Not necessarily Buzz Lightyear, but it does mean infinity. Okay, so what we've got going on here is our little grid system. Now, this is where things are a little bit different on the vertical axis compared to when you was at school because, um, in the Lua language, these numbers here are actually the negative numbers, okay? Whereby in the Cartesian numbering or coordinate system that you would have been taught at school, this basically would have been positive. So this is how it works in the Lua environment. And it will make sense as to why it's backwards to what you've always been taught um, in just a moment. So likewise, um, it's basically just the the vertical axis, the Y axis that is actually different. Everything on the left hand side of the origin still, oh, that's a funny three. Oh my dear God, let me try that again. There we go, let's try a number three, there we go. Uh, we basically can see this as numbers going on and on and on and on and on, on. Right, so on the right hand side, if we wanted to go over here, as it were, move something, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And going down, we've got positive numbers going down here as well. So this basically in this direction is positive. This direction down here is positive. And let me just grab that and that's also negative over here. So now you kind of got an idea of how things work with regards to numbering. Let's bring in our iPhone. Now our iPhone 
as far as the display is concerned, this is how it maps things. Now, if you look at where I very carefully positioned this, it means that everything in the top left-hand corner of the display on the device that we are programming, so that could be a window screen, it could be a smart tablet, it could be an iPhone, which is what this is simulating right now, but it could be an Android phone. It could also be horizontal we could be having this phone right now in landscape mode but that's a, that's getting a little bit more confusing so for the moment just the, let's work this way um everything starts in the top left corner which is why the numbers generally work down because if we're going to always count from here it's much easier to do maths compute and things when you're always working in positive numbers it just makes life easier which is why the lua and the solar 2d environment is all flipped i haven't tried other games engines but i should imagine it's going to be the exact same principle now when it comes to our objects, let's move our phone out of the way, objects work differently. Objects know where their very center is, okay? So objects know themselves to be uh, positioned on devices from the center of their being, as it were. Now, if we co correlate this to how this works on our on our little app, so this is how we told our world to position itself, which was center on the uh, display and center and that was already programmed calculated it was all part of the uh, display library for us so let's just go back over and recap that so as you can see that display has already done all the maths it's worked out what device we're on it's worked out how big the screen is kind of done the calculations and then positioned everything accordingly for us which is why these apis and pre-written code and tools commands functions etc already exist for us to just basically go and utilize However, um, as we saw in the last episode, we did have to move this text up the screen because if you remember rightly, I said to you, whenever you're starting, just as a rule of thumb, position everything center center like we've done the map right now because then you can physically see it. And as you can see, everything goes off in infinite infinitive directions you could easily place an object in the app but it might be off the screen and you can't see it which has its advantages when you want to bring things on but at the moment for us at this early stage in our language coding abilities and career shall we say we just want to start with everything on the screen nicely in the center so we cannot lose it and then we will work out from there how to position things so if we just let's start playing with the, the world map because it's nice and easy for us to all see so let me just bring up my world map okay so i'm going to just tink, tinker with this right now so as you can see on the screen here this is probably what's going to happen it should be well it's not probably i know it's going to happen when we basically update our position to zero so i'm going to hit save and as you can see, the map is now only half showing on the display. So let's go back to our little whiteboard and actually think about why that is. Now, first of all, the display itself is never gonna move. It can't be in negative numbers. No matter what happens, the display is always fixed in this location. Now, if we remember rightly, we've told the map that its X coordinate is gonna be positioned at zero. Now remember, it's X coordinate, the very center of the object, as far as it's concerned, is going to be positioned at zero, which is what it's done. So if you look where my mouse is right now, I am positioning, there's my zero on the X axis, and I am literally positioning my map in the very center of its image, which is why only half of it is showing on the screen at the moment now likewise from there we can move it up and down so let's just take this out now if you remember i said things start from zero in the top left corner the only little sort of caveat i would say to that is that this is a simulator and not the real world so the clever people behind solar 2d and what when it was obviously Corona SDK, they programmed the simulator to be as accurate as possible. So there is some little discrepancies, especially when you do play with different devices, and I'll show you that in a moment. So let's say we want to now position this map towards the bottom of the screen. Um, so we're gonna just move it down, shall we say. Well, we know that the numbers are gonna go down in a positive number. So the display itself is gonna count from zero in this top corner. Let me just bring up my little thing for you. So we know that the display is gonna count down from 
the top corner and we know that the number is going to have to be a positive number because we're moving down the screen we want to move it down in this direction okay but as far as the map's concerned it's going to be positioned somewhere on moving down from the top of the screen based on this position here because we've told it to be on zero uh, on the X line so zero again is on the center so let's say we want to move it down somewhere like this now in the world of Lua and Solar 2D and app design we never know what size monitor or display our app is going to be running on okay so there is as we progress down the tutorials we'll have code that will basically identify and we can tweak it so the app will literally go am i in an ipad yes oh i display things like this and it can actually say to itself am i in a windows monitor and it will go yes and i can display it so we can teach the app how to identify its environment but for now we need to just basically work with it in this iPhone environment. So I am going to change this display here to be a positive number and it's going to be a, a unit. So let's say 100. OK, now the reason I was just explaining about the monitors and not knowing what size, we can't work in pixels, which is probably something you might have come across if you've done any kind of graphics on the Internet before. Uh, and parents, if you were watching, you might have gone and had to talk about people branding things in your job or images and things that you're going to need. You might have needed to do social media posts, whatever you will generally talk about pixels. Now, pixels are tiny little dots and there's normally uh, sort of counted as how many of those dots that you can get in time a square inch, which is fine when you're doing web graphics. But because we don't know how big the pixels are gonna be in our different devices, we just literally use the word units, okay? So I'm going to move the map 100 units going south, which is essentially a positive number going down the screen and I'm hitting save. The reason the map has gone up is because the unit size is very tiny. It's still going to count from this corner, okay? And basically, the screen size, about 100 units, is going to take us down to, I think that's like Africa or something there, okay? So let's just see how far from the top of the screen we need to move it. So let's just jump up by about 400 now. And we save. Now you can see that I've moved the map down the screen now when we was on our little on my little chart here obviously my writing handwriting is big but you can see in the background all these tiny little squares if you can think of the units being tinier again like millimeter type size like tiny little dots this is how the app is <laughs> probably the display is more accurate than my my number six as it were so what we've done is we've now moved the world map to so it's center we've now moved the world map so it's center lives between the x and the x infinity on this horizontal line so it's at its very center and then we have literally told the display count 400 units from the top all the way down and then put the middle of the image at 400 which is how the map of the world has now just moved down our app so again um that's basically how <laughs> the process works with regards to positioning items now the reason i'm telling you this and teaching you this literally so early on is because obviously every single thing that you do is about putting the items on the screen so people can use them see them interact with them engage with them and whatnot so knowing this now means that you're going to save yourself a hell of a lot of work trying to figure things out in the future and if all else fails do make yourself or go to WH Smiths or somewhere like that. I don't know if you're in America or what that's called, but if you go to a local stationery shop, buy yourself a pad of paper, school maths paper with all your, your, your crosses on, like graph paper, and you can just hand draw and coordinate and think and then you know cut out a little map or something like that from a magazine and physically move stuff around while you get these coordinates 
in your head and test yourself. You could almost come and write this code and like kind of tease yourself into figuring out could you predict if it was gonna be at, I don't know, minus 400 where it would go. And actually minus 400 will take it right up off the screen, right up over here. It, it, I'm pointing like you can see, but it would be like six inches above the end of the monitor. So you need to basically be able to understand these coordinates. Now, the next thing that would actually happen is that in a, I'm gonna say a few tutorials, but we are talking a long, long way down the road yet. Um, there might come a time where you need to group and move a whole bunch of images together as one item. So for example, I know on the Solar 2D documentation, let me just flick that back up on screen. So again, I know on the Solar 2D documentation that when you start getting into the nitty gritty of things, it will explain about how you put objects inside of a containing folder and then you can move that containing folder and it uses the example of goldfish in a bowl because we could reposition the goldfish in the bowl but we can't take the fish outside of the bowl so therefore they you know as we program things they would have been put into a containing folder that we can't see but it would literally create the environment of a glass bowl so that's kind of where we're at today um, I know there was a lot to basically take on board I will throw up as many URLs for resources online if you want to read more as I can in the description below. Do not read up on the Cartesian coordinate system because it is wrong as far as the world of app design in Lua is concerned. Okay, so no matter what your maths teacher tells, that, tells you, it's right for maths and doing what you're doing with treasure hunts, counting north, south, east, west, etc. But if you are gonna get into a debate, get your teacher to watch this video and then they will understand why you're arguing the case that you are. So that kind of brings us to a bit of a conclusion of, for today's video and we will carry on with uh, these kind of little lessons in another couple of days. Uh, do subscribe, stay notified. I'm trying to look for my little subscribe button. Where's it gone? There we go. Uh, do show me some love and support on this channel because I am doing these things out of utter love for what I do. And if you've got any other questions, I would love to see your questions in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on another episode real soon.